There is a lot of forgotten content in this game, and some of the most forgotten content might actually be the mini quests. There's a handful on here that everybody will want to do, but there's a lot of stuff on here that people might not ever even know about. Today, I'm going to be looking at every mini quest on the quest log and placing them in tiers from S through D. This is another one of those videos that you can just listen to on the side while you're scaping. So as is tradition, let me know what you're working on in the comments. I'm very curious to know about how your grinds are going. Today we'll be doing all the mini quests, I'll be doing them in order of release, and I'll just kind of give you some general information on each of them as we go. So the very first mini quest added to the game is Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl. This came out in 2002. This mini quest is needed to do Horror from the Deep and Scorpion Catcher, and it also gives you access to Barbarian Outpost. This is the agility course behind Barbarian Assault. This is one of those mini quests where you don't really do anything. You just kind of go around and drink a unique drink from a bunch of different bars across the game. It's good early on to kind of get a bearing for the game and kind of let you explore all the areas. Uh, I don't think anything from this is that crazy. This agility course is pretty terrible, especially with the release of rooftop agility courses. It is needed for two quests and there's a clue step in the agility course. Uh, I think this is just kind of... A nothing burger it just it's something you should do but i don't really think it's that beneficial to an account so i'm just gonna put it in b next is major arena one can you believe that major arena one came out in 2003 that is crazy major arena one is a lot like other quests that you kind of just do so that you can do other quests this one does give you the first version of the God Capes, which is very nice to have, especially early on. This is one of like the very few quests that takes part in the wilderness as well, so that also makes it kind of interesting. And after you complete the quest, you can then cast Ceridome and Strike, Claws of Guthix, and Flame of Zamorak, uh, basically anywhere, as long as you go and train it in the Mage Training Arena. You kind of just fight one guy who like transforms into a million different forms. Uh, not that interesting of a quest, I'll be honest. I think this also unlocks the God Staffs, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you can actually wear those before, but now you can definitely buy them. Uh, this is another one like the Bar Crawl, where it's like, it's good to do, but it's not like a end-all be-all type of thing. And that's what a lot of these are going to be, let's be honest. Uh, but I think just Major Arena 1, just for the fact that it unlocks Major Arena 2, as well as giving you your first God Cape, uh, it's definitely got to go above the bar crawl, and on a mini quest scale, I think it goes into A. I think that's fair. The next one is Enter the Abyss. Enter the Abyss came out in 2005 and gave players access to the Abyss where they could runecraft. The lore behind this is that basically anyone who followed Sarah Doman was able to mine pure essence, so the Zamorak, wizards and mages wanted this for themselves. So they kind of convinced the player to help them get access to it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool for the lore. This game has a surprising amount of lore, like especially when you look at it, it's like this weird blocky game, but then it has the deepest lore of all time. This mini quest also gives you access to rune pouches, like the ones that carry essence. I guess they're called essence pouches, sorry. Uh, but those are, those are very important, let's be honest. I know not everybody loves rune crafting, but just having the ability to get those is huge. You also get 1000 runecraft experience, which is pretty big, especially because you can do this so early on. The completion of this mini quest also lets you now do Devious Minds, Temple of the Eye, Wanted, and the Wilderness Easy Diary. Uh, so this one is pretty, pretty important. I think this one is one of the more important mini quests. If you're just starting out or like you're very new into your journey, if you have not done this mini quest, you really should. It'll give you a good boost to runecraft and it basically lets you kind of like jump through a bunch of different quests and put your runecraft at a pretty good spot. Like it or not, I'm going to put this one in S for now. It might get moved, but it is one of the better mini quests in the game. The next mini quest is the Curse of the Empty Lord. This one was also added in 2005, but I think it falls off compared to Enter the Abyss. This mini quest lets you get ghostly robes, which for a time were a very good uh, set of gear for pure PKing. But I think as time has gone on, we kind of have some better options. The Fashion Escape is pretty cool. It's one of like the only transparent gear sets in the game. This mini quest also gives you 10 kudos, which is kind of nice, but there are so many options to get kudos now that it doesn't really matter unless you're trying to get all two 255, is that how many kudos you can get? But it also offers you an experience lamp that gives you 10,000 experience in any skill above 50. 
This one kind of has you like going around talking to a bunch of different ghosts and uncovering again more lore. There's also this weird thing where you have to talk to Vagora and depending on which sequence you get that's now where your Vagora will exist. There's, I think it's an elite clue. I'm not entirely sure, but there's a step where you need to talk to Vagora. So if you haven't done this mini quest, this will tell you his location. Uh, but this one nowadays, pretty bad. If we were still back in the time where ghostly robes are really used a lot, I'd probably put it a little bit higher. But I think there's just so many options for gear now that it, it kind of just falls off. And I think this is gonna be my first one that goes into C tier. Another 2005 mini quest, Skippy and the Mogers. This mini quest lets you learn how to fight Mogers and basically gives you the ability to unlock Flippers and the Mudskipper hat. Now, if you know me, Flippers and the Mudskipper hat are elite fashion scape, but I don't think that really does enough for me. Flippers do have some use in case you were curious. There is an underwater training like area. And if you have the flippers equipped, you'll actually swim faster. So they do have a use. They're not just a cosmetic, but I do think this area is so underutilized right now. It could change in the future, but only having that one activity that's so click intensive and is not really the best overall thing. It is pretty good. I'll say that it's pretty good, but it's not the best overall. So having that benefit there, really doesn't do it for me skipping the mogers i think you're gonna go into c tier you're going just above the ghostly robes damn they were busy in 2005 the enchanted key is another mini quest that came out in 2005 and this one this is where the hot and cold steps come from basically you get an enchanted key you touch it if it's hot you're close if it's cold you're far away there are three really weird items that actually come from this. This is where the God Spears come from. I remember seeing like a very old video where somebody was flipping these, uh, but these, they're not very good. They're kind of like a cosmetic and they're technically a flip item because a lot of the times you'll be able to buy them for like one to 10 coins and sell them for over a thousand. This is basically just a prolonged hot and cold clue step. You go to a bunch of different points. You'll get one of each God Spear, 60 iron ores, 30 mithril, some pure essence, a variety of other runes, and then some low tier arrows. The total loot from selling everything you dig up is about 17K. Uh, this mini quest is pretty bad. I really hope they do something with it in the future, but for now, the Enchanted Key is my first one in the D tier. And now we skip ahead two years to the Lair of Tarn Razalore. I'll never say that name right. This one came out in early 2007. This mini quest is awful. <laughs> like the, only in the sense of it was like the precursor to that terrible agility run you had to do for Darkness of Halavale. You basically have to run all the way through Tarn's Lair to get to him. And then you have a, a pretty, pretty easy boss fight. Hopefully I'm showing you on the screen now some of these like terrible, terrible runs that you had to go through it's just like a mix and match of like running through random rooms traps are going off you're just taking unavoidable damage from all these npcs it's it's not great but the reward from this is what makes it worthwhile this mini quest gives you the access to the salve amulet e and in turn the salve amulet ei this necklace is so good specifically for vorkath and i guess you could include vedion in that list the Salve Amulet E gives you a 20% buff against anything that's undead, and this is used in a lot of scenarios in place of the Slayer Helmet. If you're planning on doing any substantial amount of Vorkath in the future, this is definitely something you want to do. You also get a token amount of 5,000 Slayer experience, but that Salve Amulet is so good. So with the Salve Amulet in mind, I'm going to put this in A. I'm going to put it above Major Arena 1 because it is better than the original God Cape in some senses. It doesn't have as many uses, but in the areas it does, it's so good, man. The next mini quest on our list is the General's Shadow. This is another mini quest that came out in 2007, and it's basically a continuation of the events of the Fight Arena quest. This one is not that great. It kind of just closes the loop on the story for the quest. You get 2000 Slayer XP, which is kind of nice, but overall it's really not that important. You also get the Shadow Sword, which is used for an elite clue step. It might be a master clue step, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but it, it's just overall not that great. You basically seek out a guy who's invisible with the Ring of Visibility, and then you kill Bouncer, who's already dead. I don't think this mini quest has anything really crazy hidden in it. It's just... It's a lore, it's a lore quest. So if you like lore, it's definitely for you. But as for rewards, not that great. Uh, I'm gonna put this one in D. Ah, uh, no, because it has a clue item. I'll put it in C. But do I put it above the ghostly robes? Nah, I'll put it down there. 
This is one of the big boys for mini quests. And it's kind of crazy that we're jumping from 2007 all the way to 2016. The Architectural Alliance was added on the Great Karend to basically let you rebuild the statue of King Rada. I believe this quest was added because when favor came out, if you gained favor in another house, you would lose the favor you'd gained in another one. So this was added so that you could lock your favor in and you would never lose that 100% in a household. Nowadays, that doesn't exist anymore. You can just gain the favor and it will never go down. But this mini quest does give you an antique lamp that grants 10,000 experience in any skill of your choice above level 40. And if you did this mini quest before February of 2019, you can actually claim this lamp if you haven't yet. This mini quest also gives you access to the Xerix Heart Teleport on the Xerix Talisman, and this will teleport you to the Heart of Karen. This is basically a teleport right to the statue. There is an alternative through the library, so it's not that standout, but this is a task for the Hard Karen in Kebo's Diary. You'll also need this mini quest to do a Kingdom Divided, so it's definitely up there on the list. I think the big thing for this is that you'll have 100% favor in all the households. I spoke about this in my mid game progression video and having 100% in all the households is, it's very important. Uh, I remember this being super important back in the day, but I think it's kind of fallen off a little bit. I'm still gonna rank it pretty highly, but I think it sits below the salve amulet in this case. The next mini quest added was Bear Your Soul in 2016. This mini quest has you looking for a damaged ancient artifact that is mentioned in a book. You're basically doing a clue scroll without the clue scroll. The reward for completing this is the Soul Bearer. The Soul Bearer is interested. It will basically bank all your insult heads while you're out and about. Uh, I don't really see it having that much use. I guess it's kind of nice. I don't really know this, but if you're an Iron Man, you're probably wanting to pick up all your insult heads and having this to save some inventory space is kind of nice, but it does cost one blood and one soul per use. So there's a cost associated with banking your insult heads. So I don't really know how this one should rank. I'm looking at all the, like the, the profit per deposit. You only lose money on depositing imp insult heads, but for something like a unicorn, you'd make 1000 per head. And then anything above the elf seems like you're also making money. So you'd make money on everything. So maybe not a bad idea to pick this up if it's something you're interested in. Uh, Soul Bearer for me, not really that great. I, it, it obviously has some niche use, but bones are more viable for Iron Men at this point in time. And I think just buying stuff you need on a main account is also good. It's good for making a little bit of extra money, but I can't really put it above like a God Cape or a hard diary requirement. So I'm going to put it in B above the Bar Crawl because it does unlock something. It does have a use, but it's just overall not that great. In late 2016, we got the Family Pest mini quest. If you remember doing the Family Crest, you received a pair of gauntlets at the end of your journey. And this mini quest basically lets you get every variation of them at once. In reality, I think you only need two of these gauntlets, the goldsmith and then maybe the cooking gauntlets. I mean, the chaos gauntlets could be nice, but you lose out on a lot of magic bonus. So I think you really only need two of them. Yeah, this is another one of those things where it, like, it does have a reward. The reward is great for a period of time. The cooking gauntlets are good pretty much forever, but at the same time, you don't need the mini quest to own one pair. The idea of the mini quest is to own multiple pairs, so to have the cooking gauntlets and the goldsmith gauntlets at the same time is nice, but it's really not that bad to switch between the two if you really need to. Uh, again, I think this is like... I have to put it in B because it has a reward. The reward is useful, but is it more valuable than the Soul Bearer? I think so. I think having the cooking and the goldsmith gauntlets are very important. You will use both of them a, a fair bit. The smithing has a lot of good options now, but if you're wanting that sweet blast furnace XP, as well as no longer burning a bunch of fish, you should definitely do this mini quest. The next mini quest came out in November of 2017, and it is Mage Arena 2. I really don't even need to say anything about this mini quest. It is number one. It is the best mini quest in the game. This mini quest lets you upgrade the God Cloak you got from Mage Arena 1 to the God Cloak imbued. This is the best in slot Mage Cape, and it is a very important item to get. This one again has you running around the wilderness, but this time you'll be fighting three bosses, one from each of the major gods religions is that the right word to use there after defeating them you'll get an imbued version of their heart and then you can return it to get your imbued version of the god cape yeah this this one's just awesome if you haven't done major arena and major arena 2 and you 
plan on doing a lot of PVM, uh, these are ones you should really get done as soon as you can. Getting a best in slot item from a quest or a mini quest that's very doable is very, very nice. So I would highly recommend this one. Next up in 2019 is In Search of Knowledge. In Search of Knowledge is cool. In this one, you're basically collecting pages that come as drops from monsters in the Forthos dungeon. Once you have four of each, the sun, moon, and temple pages, you can then turn them into Lagosia in the Arceus library and complete the mini quest. By doing this, you'll get a lamp of knowledge that gives 10,000 experience in any skill above level 40. And that's pretty much it. After you've completed the mini quest, these pages can now be traded in for 1k each. So it does technically make your Seracnus kills a little bit more profit per kill, but overall really not that great of a mini quest. It's just like an arbitrary RNG thing. You'll kind of do it as you play through the game and there's no real need to rush it. Uh, and in my opinion, it kind of just goes and see Yeah, it's not very good. Next up in 2020 is Daddy's Home. This mini quest is awesome. This introduced Mahogany Homes, and Mahogany Homes is my friend. The reason this mini quest is so good is because it is great for starting any new account. Doing this will basically jump you all the way to, I believe, 9 construction. It also gives you a player-owned house if you don't have one yet, and it gives you a crate with a bunch of different construction supplies worth about 25k. This one is weird because if I'm on a new account, this is S tier. I'm 100% doing this. But if I'm on an account that's been around for a while and already has a bunch of construction done, it kind of has no point. Mahogany Homes is nice, but it doesn't really compete with regular construction. The reason it's really good is because you would do this before you do something like Winter Tot or Temporos, and it would basically increase the amount of experience you get from going for 99. Uh, like infinitely it's really good the way construction xp works at those two activities is that it scales based on your level so by going in at level nine as compared to at level one you just get way more xp uh, i can't put it in s just for the sheer fact that it doesn't compete with the god cape or the abyss uh, but it is pretty pretty good i wouldn't put it above the salve still but i would probably put it above the it's like a mix. It could go either on either side here. I think I'm going to put it above. It's really good to get done, especially early on. But then I'm weighing too much on the early side. I'm going to put it here. It's a good mini quest. Do it if you haven't. Do some mahogany homes. Get the stuff done. Yeah, on to the next one. <laughs> the next one we have came out in 2021, and it is the Frozen Door. The Frozen Door gave us access to the big boy in the God Wars dungeon being Nex. To do this mini quest, you need to kill each one of the God Wars generals and pick up a piece of a frozen key. This one has some pretty high requirements, but obviously it should. You'll be killing Nex, so you probably want to be a high level anyway. Uh, Nex is one of the best money makers in the game. It is basically a brew drinking simulator, uh, but if you are lucky enough to pull an item, you're going to make a fortune. I feel like this mini quest is fine. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's pretty straightforward. Kill each of the God of Wars bosses, pick up the key piece, open the frozen door. Congrats, you can kill Nex now. There's no direct reward aside from now having access to Nex. But I think that's one of the things RuneScape really does right, is that the reward is the content, right? You don't need a reward. The reward is being able to do the content. Uh, and next is a pretty good boss. Uh, brew drinking simulator, you know, it is what it is. But the money there is pretty good. And I think the pet here is pretty cool too. So I'm going to put this above the Major Arena 1, but below everything else. I'm putting it in S. I'm over it. Next is so good, man. Like... Even if you don't like Nex, you have to understand that just the ability to unlock Nex and the ability to make what is 400 mil in one drop is insane. Especially because you can do it in a mass world and just get so lucky. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm over it. It's good. The next one came out in 2022 and it is Hope Spears Will. This is a continuation from the events of the Land of the Goblins. You're basically going in, killing some of these little goblin boys, picking up their bones, taking them back to the realm, and then burying them. By burying each of these bones, you'll be granted a certain amount of prayer experience from 1,200 all the way to 20,000. By doing this entire mini quest, you'll gain almost 40,000 prayer experience, which is pretty, pretty big. Uh, the entire reward for this is prayer experience. That is, that is it. That is the whole purpose of this. And I'm always for getting a large chunk of experience, but I don't think it is that important because this is just like a handful of dragon bones on the chaos altar. So I'm going to put this one below the bar crawl. The next one coming out in 2022 is Into the Tombs. 
This is a mini quest that has you basically run through Tombs of a Masket, killing each of the bosses. For completing this quest, you will get a XP lamp that gives you 50,000 experience in any combat skill above level 60, excluding prayer. You can't use it on prayer experience, unfortunately. Uh, this is another one that's very similar to the one we just spoke about. Uh, it's more experience though, so I'm gonna put it just above it. This one basically just has you get some more of the lore for Tombs of a Masket. You learn about all the gods. And it, it gives you an introduction to Tombs of a Masket. So it has a little bit more to it than the previous one. You would do this anyway, right? Like it, it is what it is. And the last one, which actually just came out about a month ago, is His Faithful Servants. This one basically just has you doing a Barrows run and at the end you'll get a little icon that you need to return to the strange old man. For this you'll need to kill all of the Barrows brothers, which I'd assume you're doing if you're doing Barrows anyway. And this one will give you a dusty lamp that gives you 20,000 prayer experience, as well as a crypt map that will let you see the map within Barrows now. Uh, this is again very similar to the last two that we just spoke about. It's just kind of like a chunk of experience for players who are already doing an activity. I think it sits above Hope Spear's Will and I guess below the Into the Tombs. And that is every mini quest in the game. There are five or six unofficial mini quests that I didn't include here, like Tutorial Island, Barbarian Training, the Natural History Quiz, uh, Restoring the Sacred Bone Burner in the Forthos Dungeon, the Knight's Wave Training Grounds in Rogue Trader. And I'll be honest, you should probably do all of those. You're kind of forced to do Tutorial Island. Unfortunately, I, I'm sure you wish you could skip that. Uh, the only one you might end up skipping out on, on that list is Restoring the Sacred Bone Burner. But Barbarian Training is instrumental for a lot of different things like getting Barbarian Fishing, getting into the Ancient Caverns, the Natural History Quiz is great for starting Hunter and Slayer. The Night Wave Training Ground is essential for all PVM because it gives you piety. And Rogue Trader gives you access to Ali Morrison. This is more for Iron Men, but it's basically just a big rune shop. And that is my tier list on mini quests. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. And of course, let me know what you're working on in game if you haven't yet. I'm hopeful by the time I upload this, I'll be at or just about at 10,000 subscribers so that is insane thank you guys so much for watching the videos and supporting i know some of you guys like this longer stuff where you can just kind of listen to it on the side and i i definitely want to do more of it in the future i need to think of a a format that really works the tier list is fun but it doesn't really let me show off as much stuff as i want to so i will still make these every now and again there's not an infinite amount of topics i can cover right but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it nevertheless Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, commenting, all of that good stuff. Thank you to my YouTube channel member of Snacks. I appreciate your continued support. You have been around for so long and I appreciate it. But other than that, I've got nothing left to say. So I'll see you in the next one.